Hello everyone, welcome to Decked. My name is Tyler. Uh, this week on Decked, we're going to be playing another one-shot of Sentinels of the Multiverse, the video game. This is a digital implementation of the tabletop card game Sentinels of the Multiverse. The one-shot series is a uh, ongoing series of challenges created by Handelaber Games, wherein they choose the villain, they choose the hero lineup, and the environment, and then uh, people tussle it out to earn the accol to earn prizes, mainly in the form of um, a copy of that issue of, of, of the Sentinel Comics. You, if you do it very well, you get a mint edition. Otherwise, it might be near mint or uh, good or other grades, much like uh, actual physical comic books. This week on the One Shot series, uh, it caught my eye because A, it's Wager Master. He's a weird villain with a lot of different ways to win the game or lose the game. Uh, and additionally, I've been hearing that uh, it is possible to win this session on the first turn. I don't know how, so I'm playing this and recording it mainly to see if we can figure it out on the first turn. Otherwise, this could be a long game of Wager Master doing Wager Mastery things. So, here we have Wager Master, and he's going up against Santa Guys, the Visionary, and Expatria. Santa Guys is a variant of Guys, wherein uh, he allows players to put cards into play face down, uh, and eventually later on he may allow someone to open all these presents they have and get a bunch of cards at once, which could be amazing. Uh, but again, we are angling to see if we can figure out this first turn win, because it, and allegedly it was not set up that way to ha be. It was not intentionally laid in there, but it, apparently it is possible. And uh, let's take a look. So here we go against Wager Master. It's all fun and games till someone loses one of those games and is tossed into the sun. That is ominous. So Wager Master and Guys are nemeses. So this is their special nemesis text. Moving on to the game itself. So before we start the game, let's just look at everything. Wager Master, he starts out as a cosmic challenge. Um, he, at the start of the game, reveal cards from the top of the villain deck until three condition cards are revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are returned to the villain deck, which is shuffled. Now, one thing to note about one-shots is, unless it's specified that uh, the the opening startup is randomized, it, it, everything is stacked. But the decks are stacked, or at least some the top portion of the decks. It, uh, so that means that the the, de the, the developers uh, chose certain cards to and always interplay at the start of the game. And effects that cause shuffling can will then you know randomize it and you don't know what's happening, but until a deck is deliberately shuffled, it's been stacked. So during the villain turn, if there are two or more face-down villain cards in play, Wager Master will flip to his other side. And his other side is increased stakes where other things happen. Let's, let's see if we can get there. At the end of the villain turn, X hero cards in play are returned to their player's hands, where X is the number of face-down villain cards in play. So he can, as in the Cosmic Challenge phase, Wager Master can be bouncing a lot of cards back out of play into players' hands, which can slow down setups. And then if he does happen to flip, uh, uh, increased stakes. When Major Ma Wager Master flips to the side, all condition cards are flipped face down, which means that they no longer have the effect that they have, uh, have, and many of them can alter the win and lose conditions. So this could be, you could, you know, work on beating Wager Master down while suffering the slings and arrows of his conditions until the point that you're confident you can take him out after flipping him um, without necessarily giving those condition cards time to flip back. And so I was just checking, yeah, he would, he flips to the side when two or more of his cards are face down. So you could, for instance, wait to kill his wagelings, kill two of them, and then he would flip, and then you beat him down. Um, at the start of the villain turn, all face-down villain cards are shuffled, and the t first card is flipped face up and treated as though it just put it into play. So it's what all those waited for his conditions to start com coming back into effect. Condition cards are indestructible on this side. If there are ever no face-down cards in play, Wager Master would flip. Uh, that means if all his condition cards had flipped back up, basically, because they're indestructible once they're face up. Uh, at the end of the villain turn, Wager Master deals each non-villain target two energy damage. So this is when the s things get real, and he's just dealing damage instead of playing games. But 
we again we're gonna hope that we don't leave the cosmic challenge aside. Santa guys. Santa guys his power. Put the he has two actually. It's giftmas time. Put the top card of each hero deck face down in their play area. So that's the the power you're gonna play a lot and put a lot of hero cards out into play face down. Uh, and then the alternate power, the secondary power, one pl player may flip all face down cards in their play area, treating them as though they were just put into play. So whatever those face down cards are, because you don't know what they are, will all flip at once and you could get just a random series of who knows what. And in the end, guys starts with the best card ever, which is a great, you know, initial draw. A retcon, which can destroy an ongoing or an environment, and then draw a player card. Oh uh, yeah, I'm that guy. You can give another player a high five and then treat this card as it had the game text of every ongoing card in that player's play area. So that's probably not going to be super useful the first turn. And then where did I leave that? Draw two cards. If not, did you get what you're looking for? If so, good. If not, you may discard the two cards you just drew to draw, put a card from your trash in your hand. So you can draw two or get something out of your trash to, into hand. Now we have the visionary. Good old visionary. Let someone draw two cards and discard one. And her uh, cards are decoy projection. Whenever that visionary would be dealt damage, redirect the damage to this card. It's a good decoy card. Divergence to destroy an ongoing card or take an ongoing from a hero's trash and put it on top of their deck. Psychic Maelstrom, deal each non-hero target two psychic damage. Play this card next to a target other than the character card. And then when that tar target deals damage, you may redirect that damage to another target. Interesting. And then Expatriate. Her power is to load. She gets to play a second card. So, reload lets her take an ammo from the trash and put it into player in hand, not relevant on the first turn. RPG Launcher destroys an ongoing or an environment card, and then ex Expatriate deals up to two targets, two fire damage each. Shock rounds enhance the damage of a gun card. And submachine gun uh, deals each non-hero target one projectile damage. So let's think. Well, let's. I'm just. I'm curious here. Really curious how this first turn win can happen because theoretically, unless it happens on the environment turn, unless something in the environment triggers it. It's going to be the, the three hero card plays are going to do it. So let's see what Wager Master uh, starts with. Losing to the odds. Wagelings. More Wagelings. Pick a card, pick a fate. Alright, so before we have to make this choice here, let's look at what we have. Uh, Wager Master has played. He's played losing to the odds. If, at the end of the villain turn, if each hero target has an even amount of current HP, but less than their maximum, the heroes win. If not, destroy one non-villain target with four HP or fewer. So this blue, it's re being recapsulated in this blue box over here, possibly because it's an alternate win condition. At the end of the villain turn, if each hero target has an even amount of current HP, but less than their maximum HP, the heroes win the game. It has an even amount, but less than maximum. So we have two odd-numbered uh, HP heroes. Santa Guys and Expat are both on the odds. So everybody has to take a hit. They would potentially need to take one or three, and Visionary would need to take two or four. Okay, so that's the first. That's this is the first con the first of the conditions that's come out. It's an ongoing. It's a condition, and I believe on the Cosmic Challenge side. Condition cards are indestructible, as are face down villain cards. And then the Wagelings, at the end of the villain turn, this card deals each hero target one melee damage. When this card is reduced to zero fewer HP, it'll flip face down. It doesn't go away, it just keeps flipping over. At the start of the villain turn, if there are more villain targets than hero targets, the heroes lose the game. So right now we're tied at three and three. And the same again. So the there are two sets of wagelings. They're going to be together, collectively, they're going to do two damage to everybody. And Wager Master does not do damage on the Cosmic Challenge side. So, 
this is where the first uh, decision point. We have to choose a keyword, reveal the top card of the villain deck. If the revealed card has that keyword, discard it, even if it's an indestructible card. If not, put the card into play. So we have to think about which keyword we want to choose and then decide. Uh, we basically have to figure out the odds of which is he least likely to have. He has a lot of conditions. He has a lot of ongoings. We could gamble and say one shot. I mean, either way, it's a gamble. You, I, don't, I don't, regrettably don't know the deck composition that well to be able to play the odds. Uh, let's see. Let's say... I don't want another condition or ongoing because that could make it a wageling. And then he would potentially win... Well, that'd be at the start. All right, so if there were four targets out at the start of his next turn, so we'd have to start hitting wagelings. I don't like doing that because it makes him flip, right? Yes. If we start hit, if we beat the wagelings down, he would flip, and then things get more problematic. We want to beat him down until we're ready to make him flip. Um, I'm gonna say. So if it matches the keyword, destroy it, discard it rather. So that means we're okay with one shots. And wagelings are considered conditions. So let's say condition. Cool. Alright, so the wagelings are dealing one and one to everybody. So now, everybody's at lower HP. Visionary's at 24. So we want her to stay there. And just double checking. Oh, interesting. So it's the end of the villain turn. So we have to get through... If, if this is a fir true first turn... Well, it wouldn't be first turn, so I think we've already passed the decision point. But if we want to try and lo win through losing to the odds next turn we have to uh, account for the Wagelings doing damage. So, there we do. so we need to get Guys and Expat on an even number. Guys would do two with that, and then gain an HP. He could hit himself and gain one, and then he'd be even. How can we make an Expat She, her gun hits non-heroes. She could do two fire damage to, to two targets. That is not helpful, regrettably, because it would keep her on an odd number. Visionary hurts non-heroes. Oh, we could use Rest of the Mind to redirect it. So let's see, if uh, Visionary played that, the next pat used the uh, RPG launcher, that would be doing five to her, which would put her on an even number. mind because it's not one that I play often. Whenever that target deals damage, you may redirect that damage to another target. Now, however, this would also take down the visionary by three, which would put her on a um, odd number. This is trickier than I anticipated. I think that's why people are just dumbly stumbly, stumbly stumbling into it. It was not intended. It's just they happen to play cards that played it. Reach that point. Oh, the 
this is harder than I thought it would be. I'm not a huge fan of playing against Wager Master. I would not necessarily have uh, recorded playing this game, except for the fact that I heard about this one turn win and I wanted to see if I could find it. Let's see, destroy an ongoing rain environment. Draw or play a card. If he gains an HP, he's going to go to two. Alright, let's try this. We're going to best card ever. To draw the gimmick character. And look what I found. Show all targets. We're going to hit the visionary. Now he's even. Visionary is even. That was probably not wise. I could do three to the visionary. So we get one more play. Nobody else has ongoings to copy, so it's not relevant. Can make a character would discard top cards of decks. Alright, let's do this. Look what I found! Show all targets. Or we could just hit her. Now everyone's even. And we will uh, celebrate Giftmas time. <laughs> I love these tiny little jokes with guys. They, they sort of slide them into the user interface like that. And now the question is what should we do? with the rest of our turn, because we're hoping that no one takes damage. Well, that's not true, because the Wagelings are going to hit everybody twice, minimum. Whatever else Wager Master plays. Um... Let's... Not a lot we can do to divert damage. Decoy projection would protect the visionary. But it could potentially protect her from... Yeah, let's... Do that. Hopefully help her stay. And I'd like expat to draw. Maybe she can get a flag jacket. Yes! Drop the. Oh, we'll get this back because I believe we'll we'll drop reload or shock rounds because reload can get it back. If this game goes on beyond what happens, another decoy projection. All right. Would be dealt three or more, so that's less of a damage prevention technique. Um. Destroy an ongoing or an environment, that's not relevant because Wager Masters... Well, not always ongoings, but that one's a condition. And we want it to stay in play. So... I don't know, let's uh... Just in case. She'll throw down an assault rifle and load it up with shock rounds. What does the environment do? Increase all damage dealt by one. That throws it all off. And we lost our decoy projection. Everybody's gonna get... Ooh, that... Is... Still... Oh, look at that, guys. All hero targets have an even amount of HP, which is less than their maximum H HP. Losing to the odds causes the heroes to win. So, that... Oh, let's celebrate. Alright. There we go, a mint copy of The Gong Show. 
it was cheesy. We knew there was something in there and kind of lucked out. But, uh, I don't know. There we go. That's another game of Sentinels. That is the deal with Wager Master. Like, he's a non-standard villain. He's, you know, an expansion. He's an expansion pack to himself. He, and, uh, as the cosmic trickster of the Sentinels Comics universe, his whole deal is changing the rules. He has cards that change the order of the turn. He has card, many cards that change how the game is won or lost. Uh, this is one of the weird cards where you can win the game before you ever played a card, depending on how the, the starting array of HP values and how many wagelings hit the table on that first turn. So, um, thanks for watching this super short episode of Decked. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you want to watch more episodes of the deck, you should definitely check out youtube.com slash deck show, where we have sessions of Sentinels, we have sessions of Call of Cthulhu, the card game, we have sessions of Android Netrunner. Uh, hopefully we'll be discovering new and other interesting games to play on the table or online. Uh, feel free to give us a like there, comment on the video, let us know what you think, and, uh, we'll catch you next time on Decked.